Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Healthy Minutes segment brought to you by Caldwell Solmes, today we're featuring Dr. Nicholas Zorowski, Chief Science Officer at New Vision Health Center, doctor and clinician helping you transform your health naturally. Today we're chatting about the superfoods you should be eating hacks to keep your liver healthy even when drinking alcohol, and does intermittent fasting really work? Now, here is what you need to know. Having a healthy liver is crucial in attaining a better quality of life. The liver is vital to our body's functioning. It performs more than 500 vital tasks at a time. It includes helping us break down fat, processing toxins, and also secreting digestive juices and enzymes. Liver health is a very real thing, guys. Coupled with the new fad of Fasting. Now, apparently, many things happen during intermittent fasting that can protect organs against chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, age related neurodegenerative disorders, inflammatory bowel disease, and even many cancers. Here to break it all down for us is the doctor himself, the good doctor himself, Dr. Nicholas Zirkowski. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So, all over your social media, you are uh, an influencer of sorts yourself. You promote that eating specifically liver, eggs, broccoli, and chocolate is very beneficial. Um, now, on the on the liver side, I used to hate liver because as, as a you know growing up, my grandmother used to tell me it was chicken, and and it wasn't. She would give me right. liver. We we found out, of course, through a lot of research that liver is nature's most concentrated source of vitamin A. You know, I know for a fact that when I started giving it to my daughter, it has a, it, there's an abundance in B12 and other, you know, B vitamins plus iron and choline and copper and folic acid. The list goes on and on. It's a fantastic source of magnesium and, and phosphorus. So I'm a big advocate of liver. But what I don't know is what this means for our body. So talk to me about the benefits directly. I mean, I know what the nutrients are. It's also been shown to contain a not yet identified anti-fatigue factor. But I also want to know about eggs, broccoli, and chocolate. What's up? Right. So when you look at all these different foods, they all have their unique benefits. Now, specifically liver, the one of the things that is great about it is, as you mentioned, it has a really robust nutritional quality to it. Unfortunately, today, many people find themselves eating foods that have no nutritional quality at all. I mean, if you think of things like white bread, if you think of things such as drinking a soda, right, these in most cases are very nutrient deficient foods. And in fact, there's a lot of foods that you can eat that are anti-nutrients, meaning that they don't really have any nutritional quality and they actually strip nutri nutrition from your body. So when we look at all of these ones that you just mentioned, I mean, liver, eggs, I mean, they're phenomenal because they have robust nutritional qualities that are going to support our bodies. And when we get proper nutrition, things tend to work out right in our bodies, right? We have more energy, our brain works better, we feel better, we sleep better. And then, of course, we also protect ourselves from future affliction like disease, right? There was a study I read today it was, uh, by uh, Harvard uh, scientists that said 75% of cancers are preventable, right? So if we can look at a situation like that, 75% of cancers are preventable. Well, how do we prevent them, right? One of the ways is actually getting the proper nutrition into our diet. And interesting, because when you look at eating organic food, obviously, you know, with all the pesticides and what we're hearing, even that you have to wash your, your produce carefully. But of course, eating organic relieves the liver a lot of stress. Some specific food groups also help recovery in liver disease patients. I know that for a fact, when yeah. my dad was diagnosed with fatty liver, uh, he had an enlarged liver, there was a lot of modifications to his diet, you know, sure. classified fruits, uh, classified to uh, specific food groups, like superfoods, like dragon yeah. fruit or avocado avocado, berries, mm -hmm. right? They also contain essential antioxidants, healthy fats. And of course, we can't forget compounds that help our liver overcome these specific diseases. Now, you mentioned something very interesting. Nowadays, people are addled by, I mean, bad eating habits across the board, sedentary existence and unhealthy lifestyle choices. Absolutely. This makes them prone to many liver induced diseases like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, enlarged liver, yeah. liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, possible hepatitis infections, and in extreme cases, even liver failure. Sure. So to overcome this, obviously, we have to get regular health checkups and look for possible symptoms and change our lifestyle. But what are certain health hacks 
uh, that we can use to optimize liver health. Talk to me about the health. health right. Health. So when you kind of look at the issue of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it's a big problem. And it's estimated an enormous amount of people are struggling with this, despite the fact that, um, you know, they don't have any liver issues that maybe are running in their family or anything else. Well, it really comes down to what you're eating, right? If you're eating excessive amounts of carbohydrates and things such as high fructose corn syrup and high sugar foods, then essentially we develop fatty organs, specifically fatty liver. And so we have to make sure that we're avoiding things of that nature, right? Getting exercise in, doing the right things. So in order to actually improve our liver health, we start taking away the foods that are bad. We eat the healthy foods like the ones we just mentioned. But the other thing that we can do is we can actually look to supporting the natural detox mechanisms of the liver. This is one of the things that happens in all areas of the body. It doesn't matter if it's your brain or your liver or anywhere. Our bodies have natural detox mechanisms in them, but through an inflammatory issue in the body that becomes chronic and an unhealthy lifestyle, you find yourself in a situation where these mechanisms break. And when they break, this is where things go sideways on us, right? So what we can do is we can use different nutrients in order to actually support the different phases of liver detoxification. Our, our liver literally has this amazing process to go in and attach, um, you know, break down these, these very harsh chemicals that we experience get exposed to and so that we can actually excrete them from our body. So we can use even nutrients like vitamins, like milk thistle is incredibly powerful for liver health and acetylcysteine, alpha lipoic acid, right? So we can use these different nutrients in order to support our liver health, combine that with a healthy lifestyle and, and healthy eating. And then all of a sudden we create the proper environment for our liver to thrive. And so these are some of the good places to start. You know, if we look at uh, issues such as insulin, on resistance today. It's estimated that, you know, upwards of 90 uh, percent of people who are suffering from insulin resistance don't even know they have it. Essentially wow. meaning that many people are walking around extra belly fat, not feeling well, fatty liver, and they don't know that they have insulin resistance or fatty liver for that matter. And then it's creating a lot of symptoms like fatigue and not, and not being able to sleep. And so what we want to do is we want to start just moving towards a positive direction. And then we can start overcoming all these issues. But realize if you have belly fat on your body right now and that you're eating an unhealthy diet, you probably have some level of insulin resistance and fatty liver. Craziness, craziness. It all ties in together. But now that you're breaking down like that, that's absolutely the truth of it. Now, if say you're going to be drinking, say you love wine and beer and consume it frequently, responsibly, of course, what should we be doing to counterbalance the negative effects of alcohol? Well, you know, I don't think anything in moderation is necessarily bad. You know, um, I, I whenever I talk about health, I always talk about, you know, being moderate in your approach because this is what allows us to have long-term sustainable health. So I don't think that having small amounts is going to be anything that's really negative. However, if you really want to just work on counteracting that, then utilizing the exact same things that we talked about is going to be the most beneficial way. Put the nutrients in your body that will help lower inflammation, that will support detoxification. Make sure that you're always working to eating non-inflammatory diet. And, you know, this is the great thing about natural health, right? Many of the same things that are going to help in one way will help in another. You're going to have a big pour over effect, right? And so when you start implementing these different um, health strategies that we're talking about, like they're not only going to help you overcome fatty liver, they'll also help your liver stay healthy day in and day out. So for instance, I take a low level dose of N-acetylcysteine every single day because it supports liver detox. It's very inexpensive. There's no reason anybody can't do that. You can easily take about, you know, 600 milligrams a day of N-acetylcysteine and it constantly supports that detox process. Okay. I because love what, that. I love yeah, that. Because you said what it's going to do is it's going to support glutathione in our body, which is the most powerful antioxidant. Okay. So now eating more organic fruits and vegetables, consuming coffee. Of course, you know that this is an interesting one. Globally, coffee is the most popular and widely drunk beverage, but many people don't even understand the health benefits a cup of coffee brings to the table for our liver's health. Yeah. Parazanthine, right? That's the comp compound found, and it can help recover from scar tissue after a liver fibrosis diagnosis. In pure metrics and studies, they were able to see almost lowering of liver disease by around 70% of people who consumed straight up coffee. We're talking about yeah. not 
not adding, you know, creamers and sugars sure, and sure. like just the actual, which which was interesting to me. And of course, these detox approaches, like you just said, of course, this is all important. Now we have about four minutes left. Let's chat fasting. When we say what is intermittent fasting? So many diets focus on what to eat, but intermittent fasting is all about when you eat. So with intermittent fasting, of course, we only eat during a specific time and research now shows fasting for a certain number of hours each day or eating just one meal a couple of days a week may have health benefits. What do you say to this and when is the best time to fast? Yeah. So intermittent fasting is incredible because it's an easy strategy that anybody can implement, right? Like we can take the puzzle of natural health and trying to improve our body bodies every single day, day in and day out. And what I always look at are what are some of the low hanging fruits that we can easily implement? And I tell you what, not eating is a pretty simple one. There's no planning. There's no, what am I going to find for food? Literally not eating, right? So intermittent fasting is incredible because what it does is it allows our body to take a break, right? In our body, when it takes a break from all the digestion, which uses a lot of energy in our body, what happens is your body is going to be able to focus on doing the different processes that it needs to do, like lowering inflammation, like detoxing, right? And so when you take that that, that break from eating and you fast, you lower inflammation, you lower blood sugar, you lower insulin levels in your body, which is all incredibly powerful metabolically, which is also going to all lead to weight loss, right? And making you more insulin sen sensitive in combating fatty liver. But the other thing that's going to happen is if you fast long enough, you're going to activate the process of autophagy in the body, which has anti-cancer benefits in so many amazing benefits like combating heart disease and many of the ailments that we face today. So this is another benefit. Now, as far as the best fasting hours, right? There's a lot of research around, you know, you really got to get to that 16 hour mark or even possibly 18 hours, depending on the individual to actually activate the autophagy process that I talked about is so wildly beneficial. But, you know, when we come to looking at fasting hours, here's what I think. I think that the fasting hours that you can implement in your life day in and day out that are sustainable for you as an individual are going to be the best fasting hours. Okay. So we want to fast for at least 16 hours and we want to eat our meals within an eight hour window. If you're doing the traditional 16 and eight intermittent fasting and whether you skip breakfast or skip dinner, I really think that just whichever it is for you is going to be the best because that way you're able to focus on using this tool that will improve your health in a huge way for a long period of time. You said it. And it, to your point, our bodies have evolved to be able to go without food for many hours or even several days or longer. I mean, in prehistoric times before humans learned to farm, they were hunters and gatherers. We evolved to survive and thrive for very long periods of time without eating. And they had to, I mean, they, they had no choice. It took a lot of time and energy to hunt game and gather nuts and berries. And of sure. course, today, when we look at it, we have extra calories and less activity. And of course, this means a higher risk of obesity type two diabetes, heart disease, and all these other illnesses. And now when you look at the science, studies are showing that in fact, to your point, you're hundred percent right. Intermittent fasting does help reverse these trends and intermittent fasting really works. Like you said, by prolonging the period when your body has burned through the calories consumed during your last meal and begins burning fat. And so they always say, you know, starve those cells. So it's, yep. it's very interesting that we've come back full circle. The answer yeah. has always been right under our nose. Yeah. Well, we are out of time. You are amazing. I love speaking to you. I could just listen to you on and on and on. That's the beauty of podcasting that we can make these segments available to everyone even after they've aired. So thank you so much for coming on. You're full of insight. Hey, you're welcome. And you know a lot about natural health too. So I'm proud of you. <laughs> I do my best. I do my research. I'm a uh, mom can, and, and I have I to be tell. on the radio delivering the messages here. Yeah. But it, it takes good doctors like you advocating. Good work. Thank you. Absolutely. Guys, that was our Healthy Minutes segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames. That was the incredible Dr. Nicholas Zirowski. Chief Science Officer, New Vision Health Center. You can check him out all over the gram. Doctor and clinician, definitely helping you transform your health naturally. You can check him out on the gram at dr.nick.zirowski. And you can check him out on YouTube and all over Facebook. You can head directly to their website at drz.tv. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this.
A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OG Pay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OG Pay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Com.